the geometry inside the color wheel. Hi, my name is Remy Abdo. I'm a licensed painter, color consultant, owner of Expressions Painting, and founder of Expressions Painting University. If you've been following our videos, you'll know that the past two weeks, we have started a discussion uh, going on to the side of scientific uh, side, perhaps, of color, where we uh, first define what is color and how it really is a frequency uh, that then the brain perceives and then interprets. And so I wanted to take all that information now and go even a step further. So if you haven't already watched this video, I definitely recommend that you do. Uh, there, there should be links in this in around here or perhaps if you just go to our website uh, and look under science color or color or just uh, on our blog post, you should see the, all the, of our latest uh, videos or perhaps even on social media, on our social media accounts. But uh, basically in this video, I wanted to, to kind of take that information of frequency to put it into a context that perhaps, uh, personally, I've never seen it explained in this context and I think it can help a lot of people have perhaps a, a simpler, perhaps, uh, understanding of the color wheel or, or perhaps just a different approach to it to demystify or, or to, to make you understand that there really isn't any right or wrong when it comes to color because it really has to do with you and you as an individual have a, fer a certain frequency and you're always evolving and so that frequency changes, right? And so the, the first thing is I do want to touch inside the, the color wheel, you'll see that there's a lot of geometry when it comes to putting uh, matching colors or colors that flow well together, right? Those are different terms you may hear uh, people use, but the idea is that at some point in our history, someone put the color wheel together where it, it's a display of all the colors in a, in a circle. And then once you have it in this way, you can start to see how when you do, uh, you know, the, you have the complementary colors, which are complete opposite. And then you have the split comp, uh, complementary, which are the one color and then the ones next to each other. And then there's the triad and then the tetrad, which is either a, you know, rectangle or square or triangle, basically geometric forms, right? So th there's a lot of information out there where you could go much more detail in this if you want. The, the goal of this particular video, however, is not to, to really go into all uh, more detail than that, but it's to make you understand that what we view as beautiful colors, something that appeals to us, is very personal. And a lot of it has to do with how your brain will interpret it, right? Because the brain is like a supercomputer, right? You can, we don't really know, we're not looking at red and seeing, oh, I love this particular frequency, although maybe some people out there uh, would, would, would talk that way, but most of us will not, you know, completely understand the frequency and know like the specific frequency. We just look at something and we know if we like it or not, right? In a lot of cases, that's what it is. Well, what I find fascinating in my field of study, which uh, I've been a musician all my life, so I have happened to dive into a side uh, that I had never uh, expected it to parallel or to coincide with the color wheel, but if I look at music, the same kind of logic happens in the geometry part of it. Is that in the same way that you can take the color and put it into the form of a wheel, you can do the same with music notes. And when you do that, what you do is you take the seven major chords and then the major notes and then the, the five minor, and, though, and so it creates a, a circle with 12 different notes. And notes are also frequencies which is very interesting, but the parallel goes much deeper, is that when you start observing musical notes on a wheel, you start to notice how chords, like the, the combination of different notes to make beautiful sounding chords, are also in a geometric form. Now this to me tells me that the brain somehow no loves to uh, to complete equations and make things balanced, right? So that, that means that if there's a note that's out of tune, and as a musician, I can tell you, that'll get on my nerves if I'm playing my guitar and there's a string that's out of tune. And so the instinct for the brain is to tune that, right? And so what happens is that the way that this applies to you is that 
If you are observing a set of color that may be beautiful, all, it might be a perfect geometric form in the color wheel, and at the time, you were completely happy with what you were seeing. But as you evolve, as time passes by and you grow and your frequency changes, all of a sudden, you may be out of tune with the colors and frequencies that are surrounding you. Whether, but in, in, in what I'm bringing to discussion is the discussion about the colors inside your home, right? So that's why colors may be completely beautiful and you love them and then after a while you really can't really explain it other than you're tired of the colors. You hate those colors. And it doesn't seem to make sense that at some point you did and now you don't, right? But this is how we evolve. Our, we're always evolving and those frequencies remain the same on your walls, but you have grown. So your tune change. And so you are no longer in balance or in tune with those frequencies, which is why you need a new frequency. And what I really find fascinating is that right now, the color by far that is the most popular for walls are grays. Well, grays, when you think about it in terms of frequency, gray has every color, just like white has every color and black has none, right, in terms of the frequency. Well, gray is just a shade, right? It's, it's talking about the rod cells and not longer the cone cells, like the past video, where it's no longer about the color, it's just about the intensity of all those frequencies there. So the thing about it is that those are pure neutral. Just like white is always going to be, uh, you know, go well with anything because there's everything in there. You don't need to worry about the geometry of it. Whereas when you start putting different colors, different hues together, reds, blues, all those things, then you do need to kind of factor the geometry of it. All right? But that's why I'm finding that with everything moving so fast now, that it's good to have a neutral base on our wall, a neutral frequency that will literally always be in tune with us regardless of where our frequency goes, but then that we can just change the accessories in those rooms as we see fit much easier, much simpler for a lot of people, right? If you want a new feel, change the pillows, put a new accent throw, boom, you have a new feel because those sparks of colors are very uh, specific in their frequency and for the moment, you've connected with them. But the next season, you may connect with a different color, right? So having your main area be in a more neutral really helps you continue to evolve and make it easier to, easier to retune your surroundings depending on how you feel, all right? Did you get value in this video? I'm hoping that you did. And if you live in the greater Moncton area here in Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada, I am on a mission. Me and Gino want to help you change your life. And the thing is that if your life feels unbalanced, unsatisfied, here is perhaps the reason why. Maybe you are out of tune with your house, even though at some point maybe you were. Or maybe you never were. Maybe you bought a house and never really made it your own. Well, now that you see how frequency work in terms of it being color, right? Color are frequencies, then maybe it's time to change that frequency in your house. So change your colors to change your life. And this is what we help people do. If you're a painter, a contractor, a consultant anywhere in the world, I would encourage you to visit Expressions Paint University so that we can help you gain more knowledge with regards to whatever role you occupy in the painting experience so that together with the painter, contractor, and consultants in your area, you can work together to help people leverage this wonderful power of color or as another way of saying it, frequencies. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week.